an Oregon Sports Network production. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with the coach, and welcome to this week's show. We had some technical problems, so we've got a little different look for our set today, but I uh, hope you uh, stay with us throughout the course of the show as we take a look back at that Arizona game preview, next week's key contest against Stanford, and also have a couple of special features for you as well. Coach, you went down to the desert to face a, a team known for its a great defense, and indeed they do have a very good defense. But I think it was their offense that surprised everybody uh, by what it did and uh, its ability to control the line of scrimmage and dominate the football game. Well, we certainly were not caught totally off guard. I expected Levy to play quarterback. I didn't expect him to play the whole game, basically, at quarterback. But uh, I really believe that this is one game where we really didn't even show up on defense, Todd, and, and it's hard to explain. Uh, our players were non-aggressive, uh, regardless of what defense we were in. We didn't attack. Uh, we let Arizona carry the fight to us and dominate the line of scrimmage. And whatever chance we had of winning the football game, uh, we get behind a, a conservative Arizona team early, 21 to nothing, and it's pretty difficult to, to come out of that hole. We did have some chances in the second half, and we're at 21-10. Would have had the ball at midfield, but mishandled a punt. Then it goes 24-10, uh, and we make a drive and fumble down on the 20-yard line as we're going in. And those two fumbles in the second half took whatever chance we had of making it a contest. They threw for no yardage passing. One pass that was completed to somebody on the sidelines, and we'll see the play, and I'm sure get your comments about a, a non-call there. But they ran the ball the, the whole game, and... Uh, didn't even attempt to throw except for maybe two or three other times in the game. Todd, it, it, it's, it's very, very discouraging to, uh, to look at the tapes this morning and see our lack of aggressiveness, our lack of attacking the ball. We just didn't play very well. And I, I know we have a lot of people that haven't practiced because of injuries, but it's almost like we forgot the first principle of football. It is a contact sport. And it didn't appear that we wanted to mix it up very well. And that's very, very disappointing. And we better uh, step it up uh, in the next two games or, or there could be uh, similar results. We, football is a contact sport. You have to block. You have to tackle. And we didn't do a very good job of it. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff as the Ducks take on a Wildcat. Welcome back to the show. Time to get to the highlights. Arizona won the toss of the coin and elected to play a little defense to start the game, and so they will kick it away, and Oregon will start on offense, the number one offense in the Pac-10 against the number one defense in the country right off the bat. Very close to popping this one. Uh, run into our own man there. If, he had, if that hadn't happened, we had a big crease up the middle. O'Neal back to throw. They covered the screen pass, and they're sacked with a strong safety blitz. So a loss on first down of nine. O'Neal will shovel pass inside to uh, Deadweiler. Didn't quite develop there. Gain of only three. For the Ducks with third and long. You don't want to be in this situation against Arizona. And Riddle almost breaks it. Gets eight. Short of the first down. And so Tommy Thompson comes in to put it away. Tommy had a very good day punting the football. He did. He uh, had his best day since probably the Colorado State game. Nice, big, high, booming punt. Had to settle for a fair catch. 42-yard punt by Tommy. Arizona sets up shop, and now it's just smash mouth football here as they keep it on the ground and go 70 yards. Roberta, a key third down coming up on this next play, third down and five. We lose contain. See, we don't come off the block at the corner position. Levy just turns his speed around the corner and gets the first down. Second down and sixth play here. They go to Ottawa and Carter. 13-yard gain and another first down. Very seldom did you ever see a back go backwards when they uh, they went forward almost all night long. We just did a, a bad job of playing aggressive defense. This is one of the plays on the drive with the Wildcats thrown for a loss. Running the option, we've got a little stun on. Ernest Jones comes up, misses, but Gary Williams and John Coma Piao come from the inside to tackle him for a two-yard loss. One of the few on the evening. Third down and seven. This is the play you were talking about. Exactly. Big play right there. We've got him hemmed in. We missed the tackle for the sack, forcing him out of field goal range. And Levy, with his great athletic ability, picks up the first down. It was at a third and seven, and Levy got eight. 
So a couple of plays later, Levy running the option down to the goal line. In for the score, and the Wildcats with the point after by Steve McLaughlin take the early lead, 7-0. 70 yards, 16 plays, seven and a half minutes off the clock. Offsides, Arizona. We make it first and up five. Corey Murphy of playing again this week after being bothered by a shoulder and knee injury throughout the season, and O'Neill finds him on a first down and five. His first catch since the Montana game when he was our leading receiver, uh, injured in practice uh, before the Illinois game. And nice to have Corey back. He, uh, He's an excellent receiver, and I think he's going to catch a lot of balls in his career. Good protection here, and Danny finds Corey coming to the inside. Corey tries to shake the tackle, but uh, you can see they wrap him up real fast. And so with the first down, the Ducks have it late in the first quarter. And here comes Teddy Bruschi. He manhandles O'Neill for the sack. Just beat us on a quick outside move. Tommy Thompson back to punt. It's another very nice high punt. And fair catch is called for. 44-yard punt, no return, and so Arizona gets it back again. And here they go. They're just going to keep it on the ground. That's Billy Johnson. There's a late, they call a late hit on that. That, that was a crowd reaction call. Uh, Dante went over the man. It really wasn't even late, and he didn't hit him, and we get flagged on it. So it keeps Arizona's drive alive, and uh, that is the end of the first quarter. Arizona leading 7 to nothing. When we come back, we will have the second quarter highlights. Into the second quarter we go. Arizona has the football, and they're mounting a drive that they uh, will culminate in a touchdown, leading 7 to nothing. Levy on a first down play here, gets around the end. And a 17-yard gain, and the uh, Cats set up shop inside the 10-yard line, and two plays later, it's Levy again, his second touchdown of the night. And it's Arizona with the point after now leading 14-0. It's the worst thing you want to do against an Arizona team that has an outstanding defense is get behind early. So Oregon comes back, uh, trying to move the football here, and they do. Macklemore, a little out pattern there, a little face mask to, to boot, and it's another first down. First and 10 now at the 36. Whittle to the outside and gets a couple, gain of two, second down and eight. Sprint out pass here and hit Macklemore and he breaks a couple of tackles and picks up a first down. Come to the perimeter here and uh, nice job by Ricky Whittle getting a block out on the force man, getting him down so Danny can get the ball to Macklemore. So first down now into Arizona territory at the 43-yard line. Back to Whittle again. A little bit of a crease. Gain of five. It's a big gain against their defense on the ground. O'Neill scrambles away. McLemore can't hang on. So it's third down here. Big third down. Close to field goal range. And O'Neill pressured and intercepted by Bowie. So the Cats force the turnover. Get it back. Is there little doubt as to what they're going to do? Yeah, they're going to run the ball. Here comes Levy. And this was a good series for your defense. Well, it's Troy Bailey uh, forced the quarterback inside here as he tries to escape the stranglehold. You can see him at the top there getting held by 79 and taken down. Ernest Jones comes from the backside and makes the tackle. So second down after no gain. Try to a little quarterback counter play up inside, and we had him wrapped up there, and they blew him dead. You see, they're running the counter play with a quarterback faking the toss, and then he's going to come back and keep to the other side on the counter play. You see how strong Levy is, and then here's a play. I mean, this is tough to figure out here. Third and 13. Where's he throwing this one to? He's throwing it in the third row of the bleachers. There's not a receiver within 20 yards, yet intentional grounding was not called on this. And the explanation you were given? That since he was in the grasp, that it might have affected the direction of his throw, that there was somewhere down, somebody down there somewhere in the stadium that was an eligible receiver. Hard to imagine, but your defense did a good job there. Held, you get it back in pretty good field position here up around midfield. 
job by Burwell taking it up the inside there. Come on a sprint out, we don't do a good job. We miss the block on the perimeter, and O'Neill under pressure gets sacked. So a good field position, kind of uh, unable to take advantage of it. The Cats get it back again. We nail Bandison in the backfield with John Toma Piao. One of the few penetrations we made into their backfield all night long. And so the punt by Arizona now in a little scary situation here. Dameron Ricketts back there receiving punts this week. A, a short punt. He fields it on one bounce, and then it gets loose. And we come up with it. I think Camille Stone recovers the ball. Good effort on his part. So unable to move the ball, Arizona gets it back. The outside, I think that's what you were talking about. The terrible, the terrible, terrible tackling. And then a couple of plays later, here goes Levy. And no tackling. And speed. Flat out speed. He takes it down the sidelines for the touchdown from 48 yards out. And boy, you're in a tough situation now. Down 21 to nothing. Still a couple of minutes left in the half. They come back. Bring in Ryan Hessen to try to maybe uh, move the ball through the air. He coughs it up. You get a turnover and one final possession. They had a little center quarterback exchange problem here. Looks like Rich Rule uh, was given credit, although maybe Jeremy, Jeremy Asher, Asher. should have got it. So you have a one final possession, 40 seconds left. Uh, have three complete the passes, but to run out of time. We do, uh, don't use the clock as well as we probably should have in this situation. O'Neill throws uh, through the flat, Corey Murphy, he gets out of bounds. And we figure we can get one play down in the field goal territory and get out of bounds, maybe we'll be all right. We're forced out of the pocket, which costs a little more time than we'd like to have used. Finds Willie Tate, Willie gets out of bounds, but just as the seconds ticked off the clock at the end of half. So the end of the first half, Arizona leading 21 to nothing. When we come back, we will profile one of the Oregon seniors and have a lot more, so stay with us. Ready for the third quarter, Arizona leading it 21 to nothing. Remember, they had the option to start the game, and so now they will get the football to start. Levy looked like he wanted to throw, and then not being comfortable with doing that, gets uh, knocked out of bounds for a sack. Forced out by uh, John Tomo Piao. Got good pressure coming from the backside. And Tomo Piao comes up to contain and knocks him on out of bounds. So a loss of eight puts them into a long yardage situation. So they come back, try to run the option here. Good job stringing it out by your defense. We played it. Amazing. Amazing. It can be done, right? It can be done. Good job uh, at the top by Ernest Jones playing off, stringing the play out. Troy Bailey in pursuit. Levy tries to reverse his field and is met by uh, Dante Lewis and Jeremy Asher. So no gain. Third down, that's that little spin quarterback draw. Try that quarterback counter. It didn't work all night. It's the only thing that didn't work all night for him. <laughs> so the first offensive possession, O'Neill back, wall drop. He gets his mitts on you. You can forget it. Sacked for minus two. Out Interesting of... play here. Uh, Willie Tate looked like he's out of the play, and then he's in the play. And you'll see why in the low angle camera here. He basically kind of goes down to his knees and then gets right up. That's what we call a sucker screen. Uh, we had their coverage people chasing both backs going out the side. Willie Tate falls down, gets up, comes off into wide open spaces, and Bowie's the first one to come after him, grabs the face mask briefly. Willie Tate, as he has done many times, just sheds him and picks up a big, big game. That gives you a little spark here. And now I got the ball in Arizona territory to start the third quarter. This is a uh, second down play, O'Neill scrambling. And then on third down, third and about 11. Pass to McLemore, but they were sitting there. Their safety jumped up and read it very well and tackled him. And now we have to attempt a 42-yard field goal. And 
Tommy's first miss in uh, seven or eight attempts, just a wide right by about a yard and a half. Yeah, not very much. He had missed or had made seven consecutive field goals. Come right back, though, as your defense uh, gets the ball. Defense did a good job three and out on the next series. And this is a play action pass. We get good protection on the perimeter. O'Neill's able to step up and find Derek Deadweiler coming across the grain. And Derek now picks up a nice game. So you've got a first down at the Arizona 42 yard line. Five minutes remaining in the quarter. These quarters go fast with Arizona running the ball like they did. Good job by Danny here. O'Neill refusing to go down, scrambles up for a positive game. Manages to somehow get four yards out of that. And on second down and six. Again, tries to scramble up and gets a few yards. <coughs> Excuse me. Then on third down and two, try to run the option yourself. In fact, we don't protect the backside at all. Uh, that happened to us twice or three times in the game. And O'Neill's tackle for a two-yard loss. And now Tommy into an attempt, a 54-yard field goal. Wind had subsided just a little bit, and that one just squeezed over, and you'll see how close it is on the low angle. It's long enough, Todd. That's, right. That's all I know. It was long enough. <laughs> Great kick by Tommy. Gives us a little spark. We come out of this drive with some points after having missed the, the one earlier. Clears by about a foot. Mm, give him two or three feet. Great kick, though. That's the longest field goal in the Pac-10 this season and the second longest in Tommy's career. Nice job uh, by Ernest Jones coming off here and Jeremy Asher making the tackle for a loss. At this point, is it, is it a matter of figuring out what they're doing, get accustomed to their speed, playing with intensity? We had changed up some of the schemes, but uh, then all that goes out the door is they just run it right up the gut on us on a counter play and pick up about 15 yards on a first down. But just end up stopping them on the, on the drive right in this situation here poor pitch and, and they go nowhere. So you've done a nice job defensively in the quarter. And you can see at the end of the quarter, Arizona still has 21. The Ducks have got three. And when we come back, Oregon will get the football and mount a drive to cut that deficit. So stay with us. After Arizona has controlled play through the first three quarters, all of a sudden this game gets interesting in a hurry as Oregon has the football to start the fourth quarter of play on a First play we see Danny O'Neill kind of uh, scrambling a little bit as he's been able to do. Gets 10 yards and then after a false start against Oregon, uh, marching back five yards. Big play coming up right here. O'Neill over the middle to Ricky Whittle. Whittle breaks a couple of tackles, turns on the speed, and it looks like he might get into the end zone. Corey Murphy trying to block downfield for him, but he is wrapped up by Claudius Wright. But a big, big gain of 65 and the Ducks inside the 10-yard line. And for that reason, that play is our play of the day. Well, Todd, we uh, had been running some motion out here with our tailback and running him out in the flat, and they really had been jumping him. So we decided to bring Ricky across in motion, clear the tight end out, and then bring Ricky back underneath. They actually had this one covered as well, as you'll see on the replay, a man right on him. Danny threw a perfect pass. He shook the first tackle bounced off. Most of their people were out of position covering our wideouts on either side of the field. And he just did a terrific job of breaking another tackle of the safety and then sprinting down the field before Corey Murphy came over and picked off a man. You can see Whittle coming underneath here. Right there, 48, misses the tackle. Another missed tackle, two break, broken tackles. Bowie misses the tackle, the safety. Now he's into the clear and the wide receivers are trying to help a little bit. You'll see Corey Murphy come in here from the side right there to shield one of them off, but the man that was covering Corey Murphy came in <laughs> and made the tackle. And Great run by Ricky Wilson. Just a super aggressive run. Unfortunately, Corey Murphy got injured. Looked like a shoulder on that play. Come back, a little underhand flip shovel pass. Got a little too much penetration. Couldn't get a lane to throw the shovel pass. Now we come back with play action pass. O'Neill does a good job, and of course, Kristen McLemore is wide open in the corner of the end zone. So a touchdown, and we're early in the fourth quarter. 
momentum has swung, I believe, at this point, and, and we're uh, in pretty good position. No question about that. So O'Neal with the touchdown pass. Thompson booms it through, 21 to 10, and a lot of time left to play in this football game. Your defense now seems to be a little more jacked up, playing with a little more emotion, and they stop Arizona on this series. A little more inspiration. They run the toss sweep. You can see we come on with a little stunt there. Tomo Piao comes in and trips him up, forcing it back inside. You can see John Tomo Piao coming in and forcing Carter to slip as he tries to cut it back inside. Third down play, they come with a sprint. Ernest Jones forces it wide. Chad Cota again knocks him out of bounds. Nice job by Gary Gray there. Got the hands out, keeping the uh, people away from his legs. And the red hat, that's the guy that controls the TV timeouts. Takes a tumble. Shows you those TV timeout guys aren't as quick as they used to be. <laughs> nice job here by Chad Cota. But big momentum now. We've just scored. We stopped them, forcing them to punt the ball. We're going to get the ball in good field position. We hope. Low kick. We've got a lane. We mishandled the punt. Arizona ball. It's a real momentum stop. It really takes the air out of the uh, sails. Arizona has an opportunity to put some more points on the board, and the defense that comes up and holds. Trying to fake toss, make it bootleg here, and Ernest Jones is home, so Levy has nowhere to go, but he almost gets back to the line of scrimmage. The other thing is, is he almost rolled out of field goal range. Instead, he gets back near the line of scrimmage, and McLaughlin comes in, gets the three, which makes it a 14-point game. And still win with two scores and one two-point conversion. O'Neill comes out to throw. McLemore double clutches it, but catches it. Gain of eight. Hand it off inside the big one. He picks up seven more. So it's a first down, ball out at the midfield strike. O'Neill's little swing pass screen. Good block out in front by Juan Shedrick and a 14-yard gain in the first down. And he takes care of the strong safety. I think we can see it on the screen here. Watch uh, Shedrick right, right out in front, number 24. Boom. He not only took him out, he took another one out behind him. And Burwell picked up 14 yards on the first down. And then the crushing blow right here with uh, just under eight minutes to play. The pass uh, good enough for a first down, but then the ball comes loose, and Arizona recovers. It was coming out before he hit the ground, and uh, they recover on the 20-yard line. And it seemed like with that fumble, uh, the wind went out of our sails, and Arizona comes down the field here. Nice run by Levy for the first down, a big third down play there. Uh, they pick it up by about three or four inches for the first down. And so that keeps that drive alive, and you, know, you just sensed at this point that it was uh, Arizona smelling an opportunity to put the game away. They ran aggressively, and the, the defense maybe a little bit of a letdown. And, you can see Carter gets the pitch that put him over 100 yards on the night. And here comes Johnson. He rumbles down inside the five. And then one play later, Carter caps a big night for him as he gets the touchdown from four yards out. And with the extra point, Arizona has uh, put this one away. Final score, Arizona defeating Oregon 31 to 10, a game that was uh, up for grabs in the fourth quarter. Take a look at the statistics. You can see the first downs. Uh, and what a lopsided game as far as rushing and passing. The last time Arizona played a game where they didn't complete a pass was uh, back in 1978 against one of your teams, Coach. I guess that's true. I read that in the yeah. paper this morning, so it must be right. That's, that's something. So you see the total offense, Oregon, total offense there, 269. Flip the page, the other statistics. The turnovers, three, two costly ones in the fourth quarter that really uh, made it difficult to come back. Tommy Thompson averaged almost 45 yards a punt, and they had very little return yardage as well. Penalties, third down conversions. Your team has been very good in that department this year. Coach, up around 40%, but only one for 10 against Arizona's defense. Individually, Danny O'Neill, 16 of 23 for 253, one touchdown, one interception. Rushing the football, Arizona with two, or I should say receiving first. McLemore leading the way. He also had the one touchdown. Now rushing, you can see with uh, two players over 100 for Arizona, the quarterback and the tailback, Ricky Whittle, 5 for 15. 
And uh, finally, defensively, four guys in double digits in the tackle department. Chad Cota leading the way with 12. After the game, we talked to some of the players to get their reaction. My team, you know, they, uh, they did really well blocking and they covered down really well. And, you know, uh, once again, Willie Tate came in for Mike Allison, you know, and uh, snapped the ball right on the money every time, you know, so I can't ask for much more than that. I think I hit it, uh, hit it pretty good. You know, I was, I uh, definitely had no, I didn't have a win with me or anything. Uh, if anything, I was into the win. And, and being that I just come off missing a 42 yarder, um, you know, I really wasn't too confident going in, but uh, I definitely did hit it solid. And uh, what do you know, we got through. We heard earlier that they might run the option. And uh, we hadn't practiced against it that much this week. You know, a little bit. They threw the option at us a little bit. But we basically went against what they've been running all year. And they kind of, the first half, we were caught off guard. And like I said, we went in halftime, made some, you know, little adjustments. And then, you know, we were better in the second half up against it. I was surprised the way they came as and ran the ball and so effectively. You know, I, I consider ourselves a pretty good run defense. And they just kept on making, you know, six, seven yards, ten yards. And it just drove down us three times in a row. And... So that, that did surprise me. I thought they played pretty good. Uh, their defense is obviously very tough. Um, and their offense, I, I don't know where they came from. I wasn't expecting them to put 21 up against our D or 24. <clears throat> but they obviously, uh, you know, Chuck, Chuck came in, played great at quarterback, and they moved the ball. And uh, I mean, that was the whole thing is they kept us off the field. They didn't seem like we had that many opportunities. I don't know how many drives we had, maybe eight or something. But uh, they did a good job running the ball. And when you run the ball successfully, you're, you're taking a lot of time off the clock. And, uh, they just kept us out the field. That defense out there, uh, basically, uh, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, they got something that coaches can't teach, and that's hustle. I mean, you hit them, they get up, and they keep coming. I mean, you just have to stay on your blocks and, uh, and hope that the guy doesn't get up, you know. And if he does, you got to chase him down. That's basically all they did out there. Some was not clicking. I don't know if we weren't prepared for the uh, option with Levy. I don't know what it was. I wasn't down on the defensive end. Offensively, they just came out and they took it to us physically and and got us. And uh, but as as we showed, we could play. So we could play with them. I mean, we came back in the second half and did some good things, some things that uh, we're going to work on. You know, keep going for us and work on the bad things and uh, come back and play Stanford next week. We regroup, uh, coming off of a, one of our worst defensive performances in recent memory. Uh, we're going to have to check our whole card and see whether we're ready to get out there and play aggressive and hard and, and, and the type of defense that I believe we're capable of playing. Uh, offensively, we need to make sure we take full advantage of our possessions and opportunities and, and not turn the ball over. Uh, we had uh, two turnovers on offense, one in the kicking game at, at Arizona, and we're uh, one of the worst teams in the league in the turnover takeaway. Take we are the worst team, one of the worst in the nation. I think we're minus 11 right now, and that's, uh, that's not a good deal. We need to take care of the ball, and we need to take it away on defense. That's the other side of it. We're not doing a good job of that. It shapes up as uh, maybe a track meet uh, this week at Autzen Stadium. Uh, High-powered offenses up and down the field. Uh, it could go, and two of the best quarterbacks, not only in the Pac-10, but in the country. So it promises to be an exciting game. We hope to see everybody out there at Autzen Stadium. So uh, next week, it'll be the Ducks taking on the Stanford Cardinal as... The uh, two teams that try to uh, keep their seasons going, the Ducks try to stay in that bowl race, and of course Stanford eliminated from bowl consideration. They'd like to finish strong as well. So for the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week, same time, same place. The Rich Brooks Show is a